Well, let me answer that with a, a question back, mm -hmm. and that is, can you kill someone more than once? Can you murder, can you end life more than once of the same individual? Mm -hmm. Before the United States invested more than a trillion dollars in the modernization of its nuclear arsenal, we already had in the world more than enough in terms of nuclear weapons to wipe out the entire world. So to keep talking about non-proliferation when we already have that treaty, and we've had that treaty from 1970, and we already have enough nuclear weapons to wipe out the entire world, to keep talking in terms of continuing to accumulate nuclear weapons is pretty crazy, actually. Mm. It's pretty crazy. And it is an approach that doesn't pause and actually look at the impact of using any of these nuclear weapons. And so, the, in terms of making a shift, because that's what we're looking for here, the leadership that we need is leadership to actually identify the fact that if we want the human race to survive, if we want our already imperiled environment to somehow be able to sustain the human race, we have to stop this. If it comes to that, mm -hmm. there probably is no genuine defense. Mm -hmm. This probably is as much about having people feel safer than there actually being a heightened degree of safety. Mm -hmm. The kind of responses that are going to be required if North Korea or another country, because there are other countries where there, are, there have been concerns as well about how they might use the, their nuclear arsenal, the, kind, the response is either no response because there's no one left to respond, mm -hmm. or they are responses that are to a large extent non-nuclear. The simple fact is that to stop someone from doing something really bad is usually stopped much earlier in a process of what we would typically call diplomacy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are in such a ditch right now with virtually no diplomatic skills being demonstrated in the world in trying to bridge this gap between the bellicosity of the North Korean leader and the belligerence of the American leader. And the, and the activation of diplomatic means, which is basically talking, mm -hmm. dialogue, building relationships, getting to the place and reminding over and over again, we're human. The, the nature of treaties is that they are agreements. They are promises. They cannot be enforced, for the most part, by the United Nations or anyone else. It's not a question of loading onto an agreement some magical power to stop crazy actions and murderous intent. No treaty can do that. But what treaties can do is define the environment of what is unacceptable to those who sign on to and commit through ratification to a treaty, and to allow for certain institutions and responses to be linked to the terms of that treaty. Well, I would say that in a, in a way we would, as a country, if we, if, if we were to just continue this so-called step-by-step approach, we mm -hmm. just need more steps in the direction right. of 
a prohibition of nuclear weapons. And that's why the, I, I argued in my speech that we, uh, as a country, have all kinds of ways in soft diplomacy that we can be a friend of the Prohibition um, Nuclear Weapons Treaty, where um, we, are, if we're not ready to actually sign on to the treaty, that doesn't mean that we can't be going back to quite a proud history that we have as a, as a country to show our very deep concern about the devastation of the use of nuclear mm -hmm. weapons, about the fact that we don't support the proliferation of nuclear weapons, and move our step-by-step -step approach closer to prohibition, closer to that treaty.